Time to catch up with UTRGV Baseball. My name's Jonah Goldberg, and this is the head coach of the UTRGV Baseball team, the one and only Mr. Manny Mantrana. Hello, Jonah. Good to be here. Well, it's been a really busy week for you. Four games and four days in a tournament, and then no rest for the weary. Turn around, jump on a bus, head up to one of the best teams in the nation at TCU. Uh, I'd say, are you ready for a day off? But I know you you got practice in uh, just a couple hours. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Jonah. Uh, very hectic week. Um, you know, we warned the uh, the guys, especially the uh, the freshmen and the junior college transfers, how uh, it gets to be a grind during the season. So they have to make sure that they really stay on top of their schoolwork, uh, their assignments, their missed class, under, uh, communicating with their professors. Because as you mentioned, we played uh, Thursday night, uh, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon. And then we're uh, on a bus on Monday morning at uh, 9 o'clock uh, on, uh, on our way to Dallas-Fort Worth where uh, we played Tuesday, got back uh, early Wednesday morning at around 5.30 in the morning, and then we're back at practice again today. So it's uh, extremely hectic. Uh, the grind of the uh, season has started. So um, we're going to do what we need to do to make sure that uh, we're at our best on the field and in the classroom. Playing a schedule like that early, how much of that is getting you ready for the travel of WAC weekends and also for the kind of schedule you might see in a WAC tournament. Absolutely. Obviously, um, you know, you have to kind of uh, balance the, uh, the the travel and the rigors of the departing time and the hotels. Uh, obviously, the benefit of this uh, past week was that we didn't have to go across a couple time zones because that's, that's really um, an issue when your body is used to a certain time and then you have to go around two time zones to play. Uh, your body needs to get used to that. So it does help you out in a lot of ways, you know, like just a, the little things, like making sure the gear assignments, um, getting the gear assignments as far as the BP balls, the bats, everything we're going to need to compete. Um, and also with the uh, heavier things, such as the body, the wear and tear on the body, um, and all those things. So it, it does help um, travel a little bit in this fashion, getting us a little bit prepared, more prepared for the whack. Well, it started out with, uh, you know, five games since we last spoke, a 3-2 and two record, and it all starts with uh, an impressive 3-1 win over Pac-12 opponent Washington State. That was a well-played game by both teams, Jonah. Um, our, our starting pitcher, Johnny Gonzalez, uh, pitched very well for us. Um, and their starting pitcher, um, which was an uh, All-American last year, was, uh, was a closer. Um, they converted him the same way that we did with Johnny. We converted both of our closers to starters. Um, and it was a 3-1 game. There were some, um, some good innings, uh, good defensive play. There was some, uh, some timely hitting. Overall, uh, a very, very good game by both teams. What does Johnny Gonzalez do so well to be able to go eight and a third and strike out eight against a team like that? You know, he really, really pitched well. Um, you know, he was 88 to 91 velocity-wise with his fastball. Um, his breaking ball, um, he was getting over when he needed to. Uh, there was a couple times um, that he needed to make an adjustment, and he did. And also his change-up and BP, uh, BP fastballs were really working for him. But he's a good athlete, Jonah. Um, he feels his position well. He holds runners well. Um, he does a lot of good things that uh, good pitchers need to do in order to be uh, great competitors. And then Andrew Padron comes into that bases loaded situation and uh, has no problem getting out of it and ending the game with your win intact. Well, you know what? Uh, Padron has made a nice jump in velocity. Um, you know, he's, he's gone up to two to four miles since last year, and also his breaking ball is a lot better. So we feel confident with Andrew when he comes in um, that you're going to, you know, you, you know what you're going to get. You, he might, you might get beat. But uh, he's not going to get beat with walks. He's going to get. Uh, you're going to have to hit him to beat him. So, and uh, we're very comfortable bringing in Pedro in any situation. Yeah, your bullpen was definitely a mixed bag over the last five days. There was uh, some positives and negatives, but you know one of the big positives, and we talked about it a little before the game at TCU. Parker Gallegos has come in, and he has really done a great job. Well, you know what? The three guys that have really done well for us out of the bullpen, Jonah, um, obviously uh, Andrew Padron. Um, Zach Martinez, um, and as you mentioned, Parker Gallegos. Uh, uh, with Parker, um, he lowered his arm a little bit, um, which gives him the ability to throw more strikes, a lot more movement um, on his fastball, and his breaking ball has a lot better depth to it. Um, great competitor. He comes in, he competes. Um, again, really good athlete, feels his position well, holds a running game, does the little things that uh, you don't normally see in the box score. They don't show up, but you need to do that if you want to be a, a successful pitcher and help us win. He came in, he, uh, he helped stabilize the bullpen uh, over the weekend, and then even at TCU, when they were just hitting at, or just getting on base against everybody, he came in, he threw strikes, and he got you two pretty good innings at work. He, obviously, he, um, him and Zach uh, pitched the best. Yeah. Um, our starting pitch.
pitcher was, uh, pitching was not was not good. Um, you know, after three uh, three innings, when you have eight freebies like we did, um, that's not going to help you win. Uh, we brought in Parker. Uh, he kept them quiet once we're on the lineup, and then Zach came in, did the same thing. So, you know, we need more of the guys from the bullpen to kind of step up a little bit, just like Parker, uh, Zach Martinez, and Andrew Padron. And sometimes it's just as simple as throwing strikes because, I mean, it was, it was the walk, so, like, it wasn't – TCU wasn't really getting that many hits. You know what? We were, uh, we were down 9 nothing after three innings, Jonah. Um, they had four hits. We had three. The big uh, difference maker was that we had uh, eight walks. Um, and that, that, that kills you. Um, so right off the bat, I, and again, I'm trying, still trying to figure out whether it was uh, them trying too hard or them being nervous, um, which again, shouldn't be because, you know, our starting pitcher was a junior. Most of our starters are a little bit uh, older. Um, but then you got a guy like Zach Martinez come in and does his job as only a sophomore. You had freshman Caden Rossell start the game for us. He played well. So we have to be, do a better job of focusing um, and our play needs to be the same regardless if we're playing, you know, the uh, the Texas Rangers or we're playing the Little League team. Uh, we can't be that type of team that, you know, moves up and down re regardless of who we're playing. So that first pitch or the last pitch needs to be the same uh, whoever our opponent is. Well, Prairie View A&M, you got a couple of wins over over the weekend on Friday and Sunday. And there were, uh, there were some definitely some heart-pumping wins uh, both times. You know, you look at Friday – uh, down two runs into the ninth inning, and your team would not say die. They would not record the 27th out, three runs in, and they win the game. Our guys showed a lot of character Friday night, Jonah. Um, as you mentioned, we were down two runs in the ninth. Um, our first hitter makes an out, and then everybody else starts getting on base and um, doing what, uh, what we needed to do to win. So it was a great uh, walk-off win on Friday. And then, as you mentioned, on Sunday, we took a big lead um, and kind of let up a little bit. Give him a chance to catch up. Uh, uh, we won the game, but all the all those wins are are lessons that we can use um, if they understand it and if we learn from them, we can be a much better team. Um, like Friday night, making sure that uh, you know we play the game and we, we play 27 outs regardless of the score. Because um, going down, you know, 24 outs, we were down by two, we, we end up winning. And on Sunday was a good lesson that, that when you take the lead, um, you can't let up because those other guys have bats too and they're able to score runs. So if we take those lessons and remember them for the rest of the season, um, we'll be a much better team for it. You know, it's something that I've o I always think about when I watch baseball, the, the so-called, oh, what, at what score do you call off the dogs? And I'm like, you know, when one team gets up by a lot, then you're, you're not supposed to steal bases or do things like that. And I always think that, well, if you're not allowed to keep trying to win, does that mean the other team has to stop trying to win? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, there, there's a fine line there with um, – the score and what you do, um, you know, it's, it's not a written rule, um, but, you know, there's different thoughts on that. Um, some coaches believe that, you know what, let's compete to hold 27 outs. Um, you're, if you're beating me by 15, don't take it easy on me. Um, if I'm beating you by 15, I'm not going to take it easy on you. But you have to make sure, to me, um, you know, I, I like to keep competing. If you're beating me by 15, you know, beat me by 20. I want you to compete just like I want our kids to compete. The problem is when you take that big lead, and the guy on the opposing team thinks that, hey, you know, once you get up by eight or ten runs, then you got to call off the dogs. And then they, they think that you're showing them up. So, um, you know, different schools of thoughts of that as far as, you know, what the score is. In my opinion, you play 27 outs or the length of the game, compete for 27 outs, um, regardless of the score. But, again, you have to be careful because the other guy on the, on the other dugout might not be at that same school. He might be at the school that once you get up, let's say, ten runs, you have to take it easy. So... Um, again, you're asking your kids to compete for 27 outs. That's the way it should be, regardless of the score. Yeah, because even if you empty your bench at that point, you want those people to compete because they need that experience. Exactly, exactly. Regardless of who's playing, we have to treat uh, the, you know, the, the game the same. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's the starters or the backups. Um, you have to play at the same level. Um, and same goes with whoever you're playing, regardless of the opponent. Uh, I want to go back to Friday in that, the ninth inning. I think the, you guys got down to not only your final out, but your final strike. Jacob Huckabee draws a seven-pitch walk, and I think it might have been on the 2-2 pitch. He takes a, what, from the press box, looked like a pretty close pitch for ball three that, I mean, I know I couldn't have laid off of, but, uh, you know, and I don't know how many people could have laid off, but just that impressive eye and the ability to draw that walk uh, with the bases loaded to force in a run, but also down to your final strike when you're still trying to rally. To me, that might have been the most impressive bat of the game. 
Well, you know, it's it's funny you mention that because everybody knows Friday night that Mercer got the game winning hit. But after the game, um, one of the things that we talked about was the fact that if uh, Huck doesn't get the walk, I mean, a lot of things happened before that. I, yeah. I believe Laredo opened up the inning with a, with an F9. Yeah. Um, then our freshman, Caden Roslo, came in, got a base hit. Then I got us back to the top of the order. Uh, JoJo got hit by a pitch. Um, Garcia singled, um, gave us the, the opportunity. Long card um, flied out, but then Huck, Huckabee drew that walk to allow Mercer um, to win the game for us. Well, if Caden doesn't single or Collazo, Joe Joseph doesn't get on base with a hit ball or Maeda doesn't get a base hit, Mercer never gets the opportunity. So yeah. it's really about understanding that it's, 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 it's a team philosophy. It's about making quality of bats and stringing those quality of bats together. And you need four or five, six of those bats together to score some runs, and that's exactly what we did. So even though Mercer was the hero, um, I tried to make them understand that he would have never gotten that opportunity unless those guys before him um, did what they did. And, and you're absolutely right. The ability for Huck um, to draw that walk to give Mercer the opportunity um, helped us win the game. And, you know, just to get to that point, whether it was Gallego sending in two-thirds of scoreless or Andrew Garcia in his start, you know, he only allowed six base runners. And... Uh, three of them, two earned, ended up scoring, but he pitched pretty well in five and a third. You know, if you look at his numbers, um, the, the numbers are okay. Um, we bought Andrew in for that reason. We thought that uh, he was a good enough arm um, to pitch in the whack for us. Um, but I think with him, um, there's still room for some improvement. Um, he works hard. Um, he, he understands the game. And I think he's one of those pitchers that you're going to see uh, as the season progresses, Jonah. He's just going to get better and better. One of the starting pitchers who uh, really uh, turned some heads, I think, was Sunday, Pablo Ortiz, striking out 10 in five innings. You know what? The freshman from Laredo um, really threw well. Um, when, we, uh, when we were recruiting him, one thing that, that, that stood out with Pablo was his competitiveness. Um, he's a bulldog out there. Um, I mean, great kid off the field, uh, you know, with the teammates. Um, but once the, the game is going on, he really, really competes. And that's one thing we really liked about him. Um, with him, obviously, as a freshman, there's still some cleaning up and some things we need to work on. Uh, but overall, um, you know, his first outing the first weekend was okay. Um, his second outing here, obviously, 10 strikeouts. Anytime t you can strike out 10 guys in five innings, that's pretty darn good. So we're looking for, with, uh, for Pablo uh, as the season progresses um, to improve, and that gives us another arm that we can either use as a starter or out of the bullpen. Exactly, which gives you a very interesting decision because you're out of four-game weekends. They're all three-game weekends going forward. So... If you stay in rotation and he's your fourth guy, then either you could save him for the weeks you do have a Tuesday or Wednesday game, uh, or on on the weekend you can use him out of the bullpen. Now, like this weekend, you don't have a weekday game next week. So, obviously, he could be of help out of the bullpen. But then next week you do. So, how do you make that decision of do you want that, that arm available out of the bullpen or do you want them ready for the weekday game, especially once wax season comes around? Well, that, that's why you need some guys in the bullpen. Um, and, you know, I think we can right now, we have about three guys out of there, not counting uh, Pablo Ortiz. Um, they can do it. And it's the three guys we, we've talked about earlier in the show um, with Gallegos, Padron, and Martinez. Um, what Pablo gives us is the ability when, as you mentioned, when we have a Tuesday game, we can start him on Tuesday. And like this weekend, we don't have a midweek game, so we're able to strengthen that bullpen by adding Pablo to those arms. So it's a, it's a, it's a good uh, dilemma because, obviously, the better arms that you have, the, the more competitive you're going to be. And I think he's going to be one of those swing guys that uh, really is going to help us uh, uh, get better. After Jose Garcia missed the first weekend with injury, he's played all five games since. Uh, what have you thought now that you've gotten to see him in real game action? You know what, his arm is still bothering him. We try to take care of it, Jonah, by not letting him take infield. Um, when we practice, not letting him throw too much. Um, but there's no doubt that he is uh, one of our best hitters. Uh, um, he can really swing the bat. He has some pop. Um, he's, he's very fast for his size, good bunner, um, loves to play, plays hard. It's just getting him healthy. Um, and, he, you know, we haven't really seen the real uh, Maito Garcia behind the plate because of his arm. It's still uh, – uh, bother him quite a bit, but it doesn't bother him when he swings. So um, we're still trying to get everybody healthy, obviously. Um, Aido can swing the bat for us, can't catch for us right now. But um, also Victor Garcia, um, he's still, he's only played one game, and he's an important player for us. So hopefully we'll have uh, Victor back um, this weekend for Lamar. 
Um, and if not, hoping to get both of those guys uh, healthy, ready to go um, for the opening whack weekend. Well, without Victor, it's created quite an opportunity for Scott Mercer, who's been in the lineup every game. He's been playing first base on a regular basis, and he's done a heck of a job. You know, uh, Mercer was our starting third baseman last year. Um, Mercer uh, is one of those players that you can move around. Um, he's smart, um, and he doesn't need a long time to understand if I'm playing third, here are my responsibilities. If I'm playing first, here are my responsibilities. Um, and he can also play a little bit of second. He started the years for us at shortstop. We made some moves trying to get the right nine guys out there. Um, but Mercer has been a valuable piece of, of, uh, of the puzzle to our team this year with the ability that you can move him around. And he's a steady guy. Um, you know that he's going to give you a couple quality of bats at least every game. Uh, defensively, he's pretty good. So you know what you're getting with, uh, with Scott. And as you mentioned, he, we've been moving him around, and he's been, he's been doing a really nice job. He's uh, certainly improved both on offense and defense. What has he done to get to that point? Particularly offense, he's, uh, he's really improved. Defensively, he was okay last year. Obviously, you can always continue to get better. But uh, the biggest thing, I think, with Scott, uh, he's gotten stronger. Um, you know, he did a nice job this summer of getting in the weight room, um, also during the Christmas break. And some of those balls that were getting in on him last year that would beat him inside, he's able to turn those things around and hit the ball hard. So I think his biggest, uh, uh, his biggest uh, jump has been in, in, in his strength and the ability to kind of turn around those inside fastballs. What have you thought of Jacob Huckabee's transition to third so far? Well, you know what? Jacob played a lot of third uh, in high school. Um, he played he, uh, he played third. He, he caught. We bought him in as a catcher. Um, but obviously, a couple of years ago at Oklahoma State, um, a play at the plate, he needed surgery. So the knee has never really bounced back like it was. So it's a good luxury to have. You know, we have him there. We know Scott Mercer can play there. So uh, we have a little depth there. But we, need to, we just need to get everybody healthy. And we need to get uh, Garcia back, uh, both Garcias, Victor and, and, and Maido, um, to be the best team that we, that we can be. I know you mentioned a few weeks ago you'd have a bit of a competition in the middle infield. You've certainly uh, varied your, your options there. How has that been shaking out, do you think, so far? It's, you know what, it's kind of you're able to see what they can do um, with the routine play, with the great play on offense. But we still have a couple moves to make. Um, we're thinking about uh, playing uh, Scott at second base this weekend, see if um, that solidifies the infield a little bit. Because there's no doubt, um, Scott needs to be in the lineup in there. And when Victor comes back, um, obviously he's going to be our first baseman. we got to find a place for Scott Mercer um, just because of what he brings to the team. So we're still making moves up the middle, um, trying to find uh, the guys that solidify that, that uh, play well together and, and can help us win some ballgames. So you take on Lamar this weekend. Brian Nelson had been in Lamar the last couple of years. So how much of an edge does that give you? To, I mean, you've played them the last few years, but does it give you an extra edge to have one of their former coaches on your staff now? You know, as, as you mentioned, Division One baseball, now as soon as you finish playing a, a game, your next opponent is calling who you just finished playing for reports. Uh, so the reports are out there both on us and Lamar. As you mentioned, we played them the last two or three years, at home and home um, each year. So we know a lot about each other. We know the tendencies of each other. We know what they like to do, what, um, uh, what we like to do. The only thing is obviously the new players. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously um, uh, Coach Nelson doesn't know who they are because he, you know, he was here. Um, <laughs> and the same with us. They don't know much about our new players. But I think it'll be fun. Um, it's going to be great going to Lamar. They have a great coach that's retiring this year. Uh, coach Gilligan has been around forever, uh, has, has done some wonderful things with that Lamar program. And I'm looking forward to visiting with him and congratulating him on a, on a great, great career. UTRGV is at Lamar this weekend. It all starts Friday at 6 o'clock. They play Saturday and Sunday as well. For more information, you can log on to GoUTRGV.com. He's Manny Mentrana. He's the head coach of the UTRGV baseball team. He's Jenna Goldberg, Mr. Baseball. We'll see you next week. Until then, get your V's up. <laughs>